Welcome to the Busy to Balance podcast. I am your host, Jamie Zwier, and I'm the founder of Oh How Healthy. This podcast is all about how to show you, the overworked, overwhelmed, and occasionally unhealthy woman, how to find health and balance in all different areas of your life. I will share with you digestible, bite-sized bits of info on everything from balancing a healthy plate to keeping a healthy home and everything in between. Now listen, I know that you are busy and that is why I will keep these episodes short, sweet, and to the point. Now let's dive into today's episode. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in and listening today. I'm chatting all things sex and relationship with an intimacy breakthrough expert. And relationships are a huge part of our everyday lives. And holistically speaking, it has a huge impact on our overall health and wellness. So we're chatting today with intimacy breakthrough expert, Carolyn Aristone. And Carolyn is so talented and good at what she does. She owns a center for intimate relationships located in Haddonfield, New Jersey. So if you want to check her out, you just check out the show notes and all of her information is linked to that. And be sure to listen all the way to the end because she offers a freebie opt-in that you don't want to miss out on. So enjoy this episode. Hi, Carolyn. How are you? Thank you for coming on. Hi, Jamie. Do you want to take a second to introduce yourself and tell everyone what you do, what you specialize in? Yes. Um... So first, thank you so much for having me on. I'm super excited. I Ever since we started talking about this a long time ago, actually, I was so into the idea. So thank you. You're um, So yes, who am I? Well, I think I want to start with the personal um, in that I am uh, married and I've been married for over 20 years, which is crazy for me to even think about. Um, and I have two young children who are under the ages of 10. Um, and in addition to that, I am a business owner. I own Center for Intimate Relationships, and we are a group psychotherapy practice where we specialize in relationship, marital, and sex therapy, except I like to say that we're intimacy breakthrough specialists, so, because really that's what happens in the room, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a more fun title. <laughs> no, you, you do amazing work, and I know you're so good at what you do, and, um, Yes, you have an adorable family. Your children are two of my favorite children in the whole entire world. If you find Carolyn on Facebook, you have to see her two beautiful boys. They're so sweet. Um, And your husband's amazing as well. And um, so you have a lot going on, Carolyn. You are an entrepreneur. You are the owner of your business with coworkers. You have your kiddos. You, You manage a busy life. So how do you find balance in your busy life? The word that comes to mind for me, it's the word that I always practice for myself. This is the word that works for me, and it's the idea of integration. Um, So integration for me means that I'm really just creating a life where I'm integrating all of the different parts that matter to me and giving those parts attention. And for me, that word works well because I know that there are some days where some aspects of my life are going to require more attention than other aspects of my life. And there's, you know, as long as in the long run and in the bigger picture, I'm attending to these different pieces at different points in time, they're not always necessarily in the same day. And sometimes they're not even always in the same week. Um, But as long as I know that when I make a sacrifice on one day to attend to one area, let's say it's business, on another day, I will sacrifice business time to be with my family. Um, And as long as I keep that moving and flowing, I get to hit all of the points in my life that matter to me. Yeah, yeah. I think we have a very similar point of view when it comes to finding balance um, because balance doesn't necessarily mean having a little pit, a little bit of each part each day segmented right. perfectly. It's going to be a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And you, if, if you have to sacrifice something, then that's okay because you can readjust and um, adjust accordingly. So I love that. I 
I think that you do a great job at balancing a lot. <laughs> I think that it matters to have that perspective that you yeah. promote because if you don't, then you can set yourself up yeah. for a sense of disappointment or feel like you're failing life in some kind of way, and that's not really what's happening. Yeah, yeah, so. absolutely. So thank you, yeah. So I'm really excited to have you on and um, holistic health. So I promote holistic health. All of my, my women and clients that I work with are into this idea of holistic health. And my point of view is that being healthy doesn't necessarily mean just eating perfectly, having your meals prepped perfectly, and getting your workouts in. It's so much more than that. And it's about getting proper sleep and proper exercise and nur- nurturing the relationships in your life. And relationships are your friends, your family, your coworkers, and your spouse. And that relationship with your spouse can be quite a dynamic one. I mean, they're your friend, they're your partner, they you're romantic with them. So this relationship with your spouse is quite a dynamic one. And I'm really looking forward to diving into the conversation of sex and intimacy because I feel like it's such an important topic that is so rarely talked about and frowned upon. And I actually promised my girls when I did, we you so rarely talk about money and sex. And there are these huge prevalent things in your life and we just like stuff it under the rug. Like don't talk about sex, religion, you know, politics, whatever it is. And why? Why is it such a secret? So I can understand why. I mean, they're very intimate topics, but it almost makes you feel as if you're inadequate because you just assume everyone is having their a great sex life, their finances are perfect, and then we're the ones struggling. So do you do you have any um, insight as to maybe why it's such a topic that's so rarely talked about? Yeah, I think that, you know, sex in general... Well, first of all, I like to say that, you know, we talk about what no one else is willing to talk about. You know, I mean, that's really what Center for Intimate Relationships is all about. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to sex specifically, part of the reason that it's taboo is it's really one of our most vulnerable aspects of what it means to be human, to Mm -hmm. be in our sexuality. And amongst, you know, I can meet with couples where even in between, in the relationship between partners, they're not comfortable talking about sex with each other, yeah. let alone opening it up to a broader conversation with someone outside of the relationship. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I wrote an article for goodtherapy.org recently where I kind of did a deep dive into the subject of vulnerability, and it fascinates me. It really fascinates me. And at the heart of intimacy is vulnerability. Yeah. So what does that mean, though? You know, why and why do we avoid it? Well, because vulnerability is scary. You know, there is so much at risk when we step into a sexual conversation or a sexual moment or, you know, any aspect of our sexuality, revealing our sexual identity or what we're into or what we like or all of those things. You know, we risk, you know, being rejected. We risk the sense that somebody might abandon us. We, we risk that we will be, you know, exposed in some kind of way or never fully understood. Yeah. So... You know, when we work with couples here, we're often helping them navigate those conversations and, and stop avoiding them, but to really step into them more fully, mm-hmm. create a safe way to have those conversations yeah. so that they can practice the courage that is required to build good intimacy. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't necessarily mean that there's problems. It just you want to dive in deeper and maybe open that up for conversation. Well, Yeah, I mean, sometimes there are problems, but they don't get addressed because Mm -hmm. addressing them feels scary. You know, what does it mean if I actually name this problem? Um, What is my partner going to think? Um, You know, what happens if they don't accept what's going on with me or what Mm -hmm. I like? So it's, um, you know, you have to, part of having a good, healthy sex life and healthy intimacy is being willing to put yourself out there, even though you're afraid to do so. Yeah. Yeah using your voice, right? Stepping into the idea of using your voice. And that's one of the areas too. 
Um, so yes, yeah, saying no to things that you don't want and yes to things that you do want and then not being so afraid. So that brings a whole new aspect to, to fear, right? Because m- mainly when I talk about fear, it's like not being afraid or not feeling fear in order to go and do something maybe with work or with your health or with your exercise routine. But that brings fear to a whole new level, I think. Well, in a different way. Right. I, yeah, I think that, you know, being able to express yourself, you know, when we, let me just backtrack for one second. When we work with intimacy here, I'm often looking at three different areas with yeah. couples. We're strengthening their emotional intimacy. We're strengthening their sexual intimacy, but mm-hmm. then we're also working on their physical intimacy, which I term as the non-sexual touch that couples, you know, have in their relationship. Yeah. Um, and being able to verbally express what you want, what you don't, what you don't want, what's right for you, what doesn't feel quite right for you, what you're curious about, what you're interested in, um, and being able to express your feelings, your emotions. These are the Mm -hmm. places where people can get very stuck. And a lot of times I do see this happening specifically with gender, you know, for, for women, there are so many mixed messages about sex, you know, and, and, you know, let me also just say that these are both very culturally driven, right? That for women, there are so many mixed messages about what healthy sexuality looks like that when they are finally in their adult romantic relationships, they can often feel conflicted about what they may want to express or not express and can either shut down or just give into what their partner wants or just not really mm-hmm. realize what their own sexual rights are or their sex of sexual empo- their sense of sexual empowerment is and mm-hmm. for men their sort of hurdle is understanding how to express themselves emotionally because from such a young age the cultural message is to not do that because that's not considered manly because that mm-hmm. doesn't meet the definition of masculinity and so helping them step into being able to emotionally express themselves is their work a lot of the time, right? And then these two things work together. So when you talk about being able to say yes, being able to say no, self-expression in general um, crosses so many different dimensions of intimacy. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love love all of that. And um, so a lot of women that I work with, Uh, are on a strength and wellness journey that sometimes they just don't feel comfortable in their own skin at times. So maybe they aren't even comfortable taking off their clothes in front of their partner or walking around the house naked. Um, What are some things that you recommend to women who just don't feel comfortable in their own skin and want to let go a bit? They want to feel comfortable. They just feel the need to cover up. I feel like you know, part of that is really working on our belief systems with understanding what it means to be attractive, Mm -hmm. what it means to be sexy, and what it means to be confident. Because so much of that definition really comes from all of these external sources. And I love to reference, um, did you ever read the book by Glennon Doyle Melton, um, Love Warrior? No. No, I'll have to check I it out. I highly recommend you read it. There's Love this Warrior. amazing passage, amazing passage towards the end of the book where she is having a conversation with her daughters. And I think one of her daughters asks something about, you know, uh, trying to understand the definition of sexiness, something mm-hmm. like that. Um, and she goes into this beautiful description in helping women understand that sexiness, if you go by sort of the cultural definitions, it's constantly changing. Mm-hmm. Right. So when you think about like back in the 1930s and 40s, right, the the cultural sexy icon was Marilyn Monroe, larger woman, voluptuous, curvy. Right. And then you fast forward to, let's say, the 1980s and you've got Kate Moss and the waif look. Right. Runway model who is literally, you know, has no meat on her bones. So how do you root yourself in a solid definition of what it means to be attractive or sexy or confident when that definition is constantly changing, depending on what the trend of the culture is? at the time yeah yeah. right we need need to let go of that external definition and cultivate what does it mean to us to be sexy to be confident and to think about how it really works from the inside out you know it's that moment that you offer that kind smile to someone and you change their day because of how you looked at them 
or maybe you held the door open, or maybe you know you did some other gesture during the day that impacted someone in a positive way, and how beautiful and radiant that is. You know, when you can really tap into the inner source and the inner well of what it means to be beautiful, then it's it's pouring out of you all over the place, and it's so much more than just skin deep. Yeah. Now, I will say that I don't think that that means that you don't take good care of yourself or mm-hmm. that you don't do your best to do the things that you so beautifully promote, which is trying to be a healthier consumer of food and trying to you know, get some exercise into your life. And I do believe that part of our disconnect, especially when it comes to sex, part of our disconnect to our bodies is that we're not moving. You know, we're not a culture that's moving anymore. We're in front of screens. We're in front of the TV. We sit at desks all day long. I know that for myself, I sit, you know, as a therapist, right? I'm sitting here hours a day working with my clients and my body's not moving. And when it's not moving, it impacts how I feel about my body. It impacts my ability to feel sexy and sexual with my spouse. Mm -hmm. So even if I just get up and go for a 15 or 20 minute walk, just to move, to feel my blood circulating, to feel my breath change a little bit, maybe I get a little glisten of sweat on my skin. It helps me remember the physical person that I am. And as long as I'm getting up and moving, well, hell, I feel sexy doing that. (laughs) And maybe I'm not killing it at the gym on the stair step or three times a week, but I don't mean to because as long as I'm up and moving and as long as I'm staying true to my definition of attraction and sexiness and beauty and all of those things, I have so much more of a holistic outlook on it. So do we have couples or people that come in here sometimes and are really working, dealing with those issues? We do, and we really try to approach it from that that energy, that mindset, and that belief system. Yeah, that's amazing. That creating that confidence from the inside out and really just finding that inner self-love, which is sometimes easier said than done, but when you take those small little steps whenever you can, doing those small little things that you know will make you feel good, and it, it goes a long way. So just feeling comfortable in your own skin and finding those little things. Maybe it's perfume, right? That you might spray on yourself that might make you feel a little sexier that day or, you know, just do what you can. But I love that. appeal to you, right? Yeah. So being a busy woman, we, we have a million and one different things going on. And women that have so much going on, how do you even find the time to connect with your spouse? And when you do, how do you... You know, maybe you're, you're strapped for time or maybe you're not feeling your sexiest. Like how do you, one, find the time and then two, once you have a little bit of time to kind of tap into that inner sexy goddess that we are on the inside to really just make it and make it a an enjoyable time. Yeah, that's a great question. I love the idea of being a sexy goddess. Too. That's just so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, you know, I think that first, it's so important to just remember how incredibly normal that is, that as a couple who's moving through life and that part of your roles is managing life, that sometimes it's going to derail you a little bit. Sometimes Mm -hmm. you're not going to always be in sync, in that sexy space together, um, or, you know, even always having those intimate conversations. And so it's important to pay attention to when you're starting to live parallel which I say is ear to ear instead of nose to nose, Mm -hmm. right? You want to notice when you're in that space and working on shifting it. And sometimes the very beginning of that is just naming it. You know, sometimes I know when my husband and I were sort of out of sync or I feel like we're just not connecting or, um, you know, maybe our sex life has gotten a little bit dormant. Um, I know that we will start to talk about it. You know, we will say like, boy, what has happened to our sex life? Where did it go? Or, you know, I miss you. I feel like we haven't been together. It's opposed to coming at it from a place of, you know, animosity, you know, just genuinely being a little bit more vulnerable and saying, you know, Mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is I actually, I miss you. I miss us. I miss being together. I miss our time. What can we do about it? Um, And, you know, amongst all of those things that you're doing, it's so important to remember that you are still a couple. 
amongst all of that. Mm -hmm. So making the time to be a couple is incredibly important, especially if you have children, yeah. especially if you have children. Um, because that is a very, very, parenting is a consuming role. And it's supposed to be. And there's parts of that that are okay. Um, but being able to carve out that time and integrate being a couple mm -hmm. into your life, mm -hmm. that's just a couple yeah. for a few hours, <laughs> um, is, is very, very important to, to add to the mix. I think that well, once you name it and you say it out loud, just kind of look to see, is there anything that's influencing your ability to do that? Is there some outstanding factor, some, you know, whether it's relationship conflict, whether it's excessive stress, you know, what is it that's contributing to your inability to connect and see if you can work towards resolve with that. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, know that part of the work is cultivating your own sexual energy um, getting sex back on your own brain when it's been hijacked by finances and parenting and, and those other things yeah. is key. And sometimes doing something just like you said, like maybe it's, you know, when you get out of the shower, you put on that special perfume that maybe you only used yeah. on a special date night yeah. <laughs> you know, to remind you that that's still who you are amongst all of those other roles. Um, and that might you know, that's a small little gesture, right? But that could sort of just ignite that little flame inside that reminds you, oh yeah, there's that part of me that's playful and sexy and alive and juicy. And I, I want to remember that part of me. Yeah. You know, so, so part of it is working on it as a couple to address some of the external stuff that could be influencing it. But there's also a personal responsibility that partners have to keep your own flame going. Yeah, I love that. And, um, I also wanted to mention that we will put links to those books that we were referencing because I think that that's really beneficial to dive into. It sounds really great, but mm -hmm. it's a, yeah, it's, yeah, it's great. It's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's kind of like what you were just saying is going back, like the integrate, integrate you as a couple, and then you have to go back and recalibrate and say, okay, well, I spent about 90% here this week and then, you know, 10% here and you got nothing. So how can we kind of adjust accordingly next right. week? And, um, you know, and it changes from week to week. That's yeah. Exactly right. yeah. Yeah. So I'm like a huge planner. I, re I really have to plan things out day by day and week by week. It's just the way that my mind works. So something silly that my husband and I put together, it, it kind of just like happened. And we, so we say sexy Sundays. So, so, fun. so yeah. So if, if it, you know, it's just like, honestly, it was started off as a joke. And then I'm like, Hey, what happened to sexy Sundays? <laughs> so it's just as like a little thing to remind us. And Hey, if it, you know, you only remember Sunday, then you remember Sunday. And it's kind of like a fun way to recalibrate us after a long week. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I actually had a couple that was practicing sexy Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that sounds a little more exciting than sexy track. Sundays. <laughs> I have people that like sexy Saturdays and I have some couples who have families and it's like Sunday fun day is family day, and, you know, so they <laughs> sort of like come up with these names that are sort yeah. of, you know, give them the direction for what they want to remember and make and prioritize really for that day. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, it, it's just a funny little reminder that we think of every now and then. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, and but, we all need the reminders though. I mean, I think that's what's important yeah. to remember. It's not... Out, it's not out of the norm to need the reminder because yeah. you know modern love, modern life is very, very busy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and even that date box. You still promote that date box that you were using? Oh, that saucy that was so date much box. Fun. Yeah. yeah. That company. That company. I. You know. I actually have. Um, I may have a code where people can get a discount. Okay. Um, I have to get that to you, I guess, Jamie. Um, but yes, that company. It sends. Um, it sends you date night in a box right to your house. You can sign up for a subscription, um, and there's different lengths of time that you can sign up for. And it's so cute. They send you, um, you know, different themes every month, and so and things to do, and um, it's just a way to do something different. And that's great mm -hmm. if it's hard for you to get out of the house if you can't find a babysitter, yeah. if finances are tight. Um, you know, dates don't have to be extravagant to be meaningful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And there's even this book called 101 Nights of Great Sex. Uh -huh. Have you ever heard of that book? 
There are many like that. Yeah. So <laughs> this book is is fun, I and mean, all the pages are enclosed, so it's in a closed envelope. And when you would go and open, it's like marked his or hers. So you would yeah. give one to your husband or spouse, and then you would take one. And then throughout the week, you kind of have to surprise your spouse with um, whatever your message was to do. Sometimes it costs money. Sometimes it doesn't. Usually it doesn't. Sometimes you... Like, they're just fun, cute, little enticing things that you can do. And, I mean, it was a book on Amazon, which I'll leave the link um, for everyone to to check out. But it's just a fun little saucy little book. Right, right. <laughs> we like saucy. Yeah, we like saucy. Saucy, anything that's juicy, I'll take it. <laughs> I love it, yeah. So, I know for those nights or maybe those days where we're not really always into sex or we may have a lower libido or whatever the reason. I heard that, you know, maca root and certain aphrodisiacs can help boost the the libido and um, even essential oils, right? Like Lang Lang or Clary Sage can kind of create a nice sexual atmosphere. Do you have any other herbs, supplements, essential oils, holistic recommendations to increase sexiness or sex drive in general? I think that in terms of herbs and supplements, I refrain from getting too specific with that because that's not my area of expertise. And I leave that to people that are the practitioners Mm -hmm. of those, you know, of disseminating those types of things. Um, In terms of essential oils, yes, the ones that you've named are Mm -hmm. also the ones, you know, Clary Sage and Lang Lang are definitely... Um, you know, through the scent can enhance mood. I think that any scent that even works for you is helpful because one of the keys to being able to step into the pleasure of sex is being able to relax. And scent has that effect on our sensory system where it begins to shift our energy into a more relaxed state. So, you know, but it's interesting because at the same time, what good sex requires is the ability to be relaxed, but to also be excited, mm. right? And so you're, you're at the height of your excitement in your most relaxed state. So that's why essential oils can be really helpful. Yeah. Um, but I think that playing with all of the senses is really, really mm-hmm. important. And so in terms of, you know, toys or, you know, trying to pull other things into the mix, you don't have to go all out and, and go for like the most extreme stuff. If that feels yeah. too, it's a ton intimidating, I think, for a lot of people. Um, and so you can start with very simple things like, um, you know, just using an oil to rub over the body mm-hmm. or buying an edible oil, right, that you can use mm-hmm. and then, you know, consume. That's always fun. <laughs> um, I think that, you know, doing things like even just playing with, you know, covering the eyes with the blindfold and experiencing touch when you've covered one of your senses changes the yeah. sexual experience. Um, you know, sometimes they sell like these um, fur mittens that have fur on them and running the fur mitten over someone's body. Mm. Again, it helps to achieve a sense of relaxation, but then also heightens the senses. So mm. there's this excitable and sort of edgy quality that can come along with that. Of course, if you're into toys that are Um, electronic, you know, there's always different types of vibrators that Mm. people can purchase online and that, you know, can be used for men or for women. Mm. And, you know, honestly, when you're thinking about trying to get yourself into a mood, and I talked about earlier how there's a responsibility that couples have for that, but there's also the individual responsibility Um, you know, even practicing things like masturbation, taking Mm -hmm. care of your body and your self-sexual pleasure, not always involving your partner, is also a great way to keep you in touch with your sexual self, to help you know and explore your own body in a Mm -hmm. way that teaches you about what you like so that then you can move into that experience with a partner and then express it to them. And then it helps them know what to do, right? Yeah, yeah. So it helps them feel actually more adequate because now they know the direction to go and the whole thing becomes so much more fluid. Mm. But pulling in things that, you know, affect the senses, being willing to explore your own body, and then taking that, you know, sharing that with your partner, all in combination, help, you know, help the libido and help you step into pleasure. That's what sex is ultimately supposed to be about. It's yeah. about pleasure. Yeah. And enjoying yourself. Just as a side note, 
a lot of that also happens before you even enter the bedroom, you know, in ter- and especially in terms of pleasure. If you're not experiencing pleasure in general in your life, you know, that if, if life is just sort of gray and you don't, you don't get excited about that dish that shows up at the table at the restaurant and you don't, you know, you don't light up when, you know, you're experiencing something that in general would be a pleasurable experience for someone, then it's going to be really hard to translate pleasure into the bedroom. You know, it's, you really want to be experiencing pleasure in many facets of your life, yeah. including in your sex life. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, I think you kind of tied everything together for us. That is exactly it. I mean, when I talk about having a full circle of life, that's exactly it. So if you have this circle and then one area is divided, I mean, it can't help you. You kind of can help but pull the other areas in. So instead of doing that, you want to help maybe improve that area where we feel submiss to talk about or about sex or about money. So I think you tied everything together perfectly that makes plenty of sense (laughs) yeah and you know I think that if we can all remember that we're just all sort of works in progress yeah you know that there's no end point when it comes Mm. to this you know it's just always shifting and we're always you know attending to or nurturing or growing or improving a new another aspect of that circle you know it's going to shift and change I think and as long as we can come to accept that there is no end point end game where we just finally achieve it and have it. And there it is. Mm, yes, <laughs> That's not yeah, realistic, yeah. right? It's going to ebb and flow. That is life. That is exactly that is it. Yeah, that's exactly it. And that's what I try to, you know, emphasize all the time. We're always, you're constantly growing. You're constantly evol- evolving. You're never going to make it there like to this point where you have like this amazing sex life because you have to be happy with where you are at now and then you can grow and transition into that and I that right there translates into every area of your life as well because we're all striving for more we think that we'll be happier once we have the better sex life once we have more money once we have the car once we have the job and it's just like Find complacency with what you have right now, and those things, you know, it's a constantly evolving process, like you said. That's exactly it. I think that's the whole reason for that phrase. What's the phrase? Um, yeah. It's not the destination; it's the journey. Yeah, you know, something along. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's that's it, and that's the same thing when it comes to relationships. Yeah, you gotta have to constantly nurture them and build upon them, and. Yeah, that's what makes you a completely holistically healthy person. There you go. Oh, well, Carolyn, you are amazing. And I know that you have a 10-day intimacy challenge that you have on your website. Can you share with the listeners a little bit about that and how they can join? I can because I love the 10-day challenge. (laughs) Oh, my gosh, it's one of my favorite things. Um, So, yes, we have the 10-day intimacy building challenge. And basically, um, it is on our website right on the homepage, which is um, Mm myintimaterelationship.com. And when you sign up for the challenge, you basically just get 10 days of intimacy gestures that you can practice with your partner. Um, And some of them touch on emotional intimacy. Some of them touch on sexual intimacy. And some of them touch on the bridge. I call it the bridge, which is the non-sexual touch being able to share affection without it always leading to sex is very important. Um, so that is, it just gives you 10 ways to foster that connection with your partner. Yeah. I love and that. It's really popular and people really like it. It's a lot of fun. Yes. I believe it. I believe you. I, I, um, <laughs> I love your work. I love following your work. Um, so how can everyone find you? You said your website. And how about social media? Are you on? Yeah. So um, uh, we are on Facebook at Center for Intimate Relationships. Mm-hmm. And every Thursday I do a um, Facebook Live on t- uh, 2.30 Eastern Standard Time. The show is called Love Live Better. And that's where I talk about all kinds of topics related to relationships. Some, sometimes it's self-care, um, emotional, physical, sexual intimacy, all of the good stuff. Love that. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I will be sure to share all those links in the show notes so people can find you and they can click on thank that 10-day uh, challenge to join. Thank and you. yeah, so thank you for being on, Carolyn. And I am I hope that all the guests will be able to contact you and reach out to you and we'll be chatting with you possibly in the near future. That would be really fun. I welcome all of their questions and 
um, you know, hopefully we can be a valuable resource to them through all of the links that you provide because we've got tons of free stuff. So it's really to, you know, help promote great relationships for everybody. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you loved this episode. And if you did, I would love it if you left me an honest rating or review over in iTunes. And I wanted to just walk you through how to do that real fast because I know it's a little bit tricky. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the podcast app. You're going to search in the search bar, busy to balance. You're going to see my show pop up underneath that. You're going to see all the episodes pop up. And then underneath that, you're going to see an option and way to leave a rating and review. So that is greatly appreciated. I love hearing from you. I love knowing what you like and what you want more of so that I can mold this podcast and these episodes exactly around you and your needs. So in addition to that, you can find me on Facebook. I have a Facebook group called the Busy to Balance Group for Women. And you can find me on Instagram as well at Oh How Healthy. So I am looking forward to hearing from all of you lovely ladies, and I will talk to you all soon.